beautiful souls, it's Han here today with another astrology video and today I want to be addressing five practical tips and advice for if you have Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus, or Capricorn ruling the second house which means you have a Sagittarius rising. So before you watch this video, I highly recommend that you watch my Saturn in the second house video where I talk about, you know, the karmic cycles of having Saturn in the second house first and then you can come back and watch this video. Um, so you can have a, a deeper understanding of, you know, the patterns that you go through within your life with regards to Saturn and how it plays out in your second house. So you can put that together with this video to, pro to give yourself a um, comprehensive way of dealing with your Saturn placement. So I'll provide a link to that video up above and in the description box below so you can watch that and come back here. Alright, so with regards to having Saturn in the second house, the first tip that I have for you is to define your values. With Saturn in the second house while you were growing up, you know, somebody was buying you love. Therefore, your values were a little bit off because you may have associated that with what you could buy and own and possess. And, you know, I would define values as you know, the principles that gives our lives meaning and foundation to face obstacles and challenges in life with maturity and self-love. It's really, really important for each of us to figure out what our internal values are away from everything else, everything external outside of ourselves. So there is a really good YouTube channel um, out there um, called Muncho Bean and you know this YouTuber she has one particular video where she actually has she actually made cards with different values on them and you can basically print these cards out and then you can cut them out and then you can sort these different values according to what you feel is important, very important and not important. And, there's, and you know, she talks about how um, to use these cards within her channel. So I'll provide a link to that up there in the description box below. So you can work with this. It's a really fun way of figuring out what your values really are. While you're sorting through these cards, and I've actually done this myself, um, as you're sorting through these cards, it's really important that you get honest with yourself and not think about you know what you should be valuing and then putting that as a very important value but sort of really thinking about your own life and the things that made you happy in life and the things that you had to do to face challenges and obstacles in your life because most likely those things are the things that you really value. I think especially with Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus or Capricorn rule the second house that you have a look at the objects that you have surrounding your house to figure out what you value. Because most likely the objects that we collect is a representation or a symbol of what we value. Like while I was doing this, you know, I realized that I'm a person who buys a lot of books. Like my favorite place to go to on the weekends, I want to go to a shopping mall, is the bookstore and I would spend hours in there just looking at different books and buying them. Some of them I don't even read. Some of them I do read I really like. And you know, it's not really about what books I'm reading but it's about the fact that I was collecting so many books. And so while I was sorting through these cards, I put knowledge as one of the things that I value because it is being shown, it's being represented by the fact that I love bookstores, that I value knowledge and you know wisdom and things like that. So the second thing that I would highly recommend you to do as having Saturn in the second house is to declutter your home and your life. The thing about decluttering is that, well, first of all, it really gets in touch with your values because it, uh, you have to select what you think is most important in your life to be keeping around. But more than that, it's really about learning to let go. But the moment that you take certain objects and you just dump them in your trash can you, and you live without them, you realize that, hey, you've survived. It's actually okay to choose some of these things that you don't probably don't need, but you just kind of want, then you can actually get rid of that and you survive. That is learning to let go, is to learn to realize that some of the things you may think that you need that you're hanging on to is just out of habit or out of a defense mechanism or self-protection. But 
it really limits your freedom. And when you can let them go, that's when you're free. And you figure out that you know when there's nothing left around you, when you don't have all those things that you've collected, when you might even decide to you know um, let go of certain relationships or let go of certain living situations that no longer suit you, stop eating certain foods that no longer is doing service to your body, you realize what you have left within yourself. And you realize that you have a lot in there. You've got abundance. You've got skills and talents. Talents is ruled by the second house. So you've got a lot of talent left there within you. And you learn to value yourself. You see yourself worth and you love yourself because of that. And you realize that you know, you've also got your body and your spirit, that's what you've got left. And that is something that is keeping you alive. This body, this heartbeat that's beating every day, that is keeping you alive. So you know, decluttering is really, really sort of a spiritual kind of a process that I really love. Plus, when you declutter, you have to clean less, you have to organize less, you have less debt, you have less stress in general. And you, you therefore have much more energy to be doing other things in your life, like pursuing your passions, um, going after your goals. And the thing about getting rid of things that no longer need to be there is that you begin to make space for new things to come into your life, for things that you really value to be in your life once you make room for it. The third thing that you can do if you have Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus, or Capricorn rule in the second house, is to exercise your creative voice and self-expression. Now, if you have done you know, the first two things, especially the decluttering process, you will come to a place where you realize what your talents are, what your skills are, and you learn to value those. And with that comes the ability to utilize your talents um, creatively and use that as your voice because the second house in Taurus does rule the throat and the throat chakra which has to do with the voice, self-expression, um, communication. This can mean that you decide to sing more. You take singing classes or you just simply sing in the shower or you just sing with a friend freely. You know, this can mean just speaking your mind, just saying what you really want to say for once. You know, writing a blog, you know, or just writing in general, vlogging, you know, starting your own podcasts, or just talking to people in general, speaking your mind in general, and sleeping with your throat open. I've just discovered that this is actually a real thing. Um, while I was in Bali at, at, around the beginning of this year, and I actually went to see this Bali sort of medicine man, like in Eat, Pray, Love, and you know, because I'm a Taurus, um, and I have a lot of problems with my throat, especially, I don't have Saturn in the second house, or Saturn in Taurus, I'm just a, I'm just a Taurus, sun. So I actually, I'm someone who has a lot of problems with my throat, and you know, I, I sometimes lose my voice when I use it too much. I've had thyroid issues, and I've had a lot of lymph node in my throat issues and things like that. Uh, when I went to see this medicine man, he was actually saying something. What I need to do is to sleep with my throat open, which means that you sort of just open your mouth, kind of like that when you sleep. Um, I don't know, guys. Maybe it helps. The fourth thing that you can do with regards to having Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus, or Capricorn rule in the second house, is to get grounded. Now grounding is an absolutely wonderful thing to get into. It basically means that you take your energy and you connect it with the energy of nature and of Mother Earth. And you know, being able to be in touch with the Earth's juju vibes sort of will allow you to direct that energy in a sensible way in order to pursue your goals. And by sensible, it, this means that you direct your energy in the course of its natural rhythms with the right timing, pace, and most importantly, with love and respect for your body and your energy. 
this can be done through you know doing meditation like a 10 minute morning meditation 10 minute guided morning meditation there's lots of youtube videos out there that offer this you can just follow along with that walking bare feet um, earthing you know scientific studies have proven nowadays that earthing really is a form of healing gardening of course you know this doesn't have to be anything big it's just maybe it just means having one plant that you take care of and you take you know you take care of it nurture it to its fruition but this can even just mean like sort of sweeping the leaves in the morning um, you know I've recently moved into this new office space that I share with my friends and the first thing we do in the morning um, before we even start work is we sweep the leaves off of the garden this particular garden over here um, you know water the plants sweep the leaves that kind of a thing just as an, a habit horseback riding you know yoga drinking earthy teas like rose or hibiscus eating what your body craves listening to what your body wants you to put into it um, and one other thing that I really think is a great technique for grounding is to, if you are sort of more of an artiste, um, or if you would like to, to try, you can sort of take leaves or flowers from the tree, or if it's fallen on the ground, you can take that and draw a picture of it, or paint it, watercolor painting, if you are into that. But really just sort of studying the formations of leaves and, and flowers and the petals and sort of going into the details of how they're formed and drawing that, that is a way of connecting with that earth energy. Wow, I'm feeling so earthy. <laughs> and the last thing that you can do if you have Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus or Capricorn ruling the second house is to be more flexible. Now, of course, if you have Saturn in the second house, you know, you may be known as kind of having a bit of a stubborn personality. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about being stubborn, sorry, I have to use this word, is that it can sort of sometimes affect your relationships with the people around you because when people are looking for a partner, right, to, to have a relationship with, one of the things they're really looking for is someone who is mature. And maturity means flexibility because when you are flexible, this means that you are allowing the relationship between you and your partner and your partner themselves to evolve and grow. You're open to their growth and supporting them with it. That is flexibility. And when you, you know, are known or having a bit of a quality of being a bit stubborn, then that sort of is the opposite of flexibility, which is, sorry guys, but sort of the opposite of maturity. And the thing about, you know, this personality trait is that it really comes from, uh, it's really a defense mechanism, meaning that, you know, people are stubborn either because they are afraid of pain, afraid of vulnerability, afraid of being wrong, things like that. And it really is a blockage to having healthy relationships. So the way to becoming more flexible is first understanding why you have stubborn traits and then allowing yourself to approach um, situations with practicality, which is actually a trademark of earth science, second house of Taurus, is practicality. So you have that within you and you can use that because you know approaching a situation or a problem with logic and practicality takes that stubbornness away. And sort of developing negotiation skills is going to be very, very important. Things like listening to other people's perspectives and then sort of building a rapport between you and another person. Having this back and forth um, questioning, answering questions, allowing that curiosity to happen between you and your partner. Uh, being curious about their views and their opinions and then they will do that uh, for you in return. That's building that rapport. And then finally, um, developing problem solving skills. Um, things that actually make practical, logical sense and benefit both parties. Those are the five things that you can do if you have Saturn in the second house, Saturn in Taurus, or Capricorn ruling the second house. Now some, some books that I think are going to be very useful for you would be The Tao of Pooh. I love this book because, you know, 
this book really allows you to understand Taoism, but in a very easy and fun way. You don't have to read a lot. And Taoism is really this principle, this really great principle that I think it really is based off of nature and it's based off of letting go and allowing things to happen and accepting it as it happens. Very good for Saturn second house. Another book that might be very interesting for Maybe this is not for everybody, but for some of you who are more open to it, is The Green Witch by Erin Murphy Hiscock. And you know, even if you don't consider yourself to be a witch, this book has sort of recipes with ingredients that you can actually take from your own garden or very natural organic um, ingredients that you can make a recipe of and then you can make a drink out of it, for example, or eat from it. But, but they've also got like mantras right that you can say that connects you to the actual food that you're about to eat movies that I would highly recommend is the pursuit of happiness so of course you know it's starred by Will Smith and it's about a man who has lost a lot of things within his life and he's sort of in this state of poverty he only has his son left and there's a lot on and his plate, a lot of responsibilities in taking care of his son, but he manages to get through it because he believed in himself. And so he's got that self-love within himself. And also, and also I'd recommend Dead Poet Society because this movie is really about, you know, the, the boys in this boarding school. They really are searching to let out their creative voice. You know, whether that's through, you know, acting in a play or writing poetry. So they're really getting that part of them out and they're really sort of shifting their perspective about studies, about schools and about life in general. You know, the scene where everybody stands on their chair and they go, oh, captain, my captain. Like, that is something that, you know, the F side in the second house, just sort of embracing a completely new perspective and being flexible to new things that come into your life flexible to change that is going to be really important so and i love that movie by the way guys that's like one of my all-time favorite movies so there you go these are some tips for if you have saturn in the second house and taurus or if you have capricorn rule in the second house and you can use these tips you know during your saturn return before your saturn return even to prepare for it or even just at any time throughout your life so I hope this video was somehow useful for you and if you like it, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if you haven't. If you haven't, thank you very much for coming along. I do birth chart readings, synastry, relationship readings. You can find more information on my website. And yeah, I'll see you soon guys with tips for Saturn in the third house in the next video. Bye.